Okay, so today we are going to be going over expansion to the West, basically. I'm nation on the move. So the first question, who are the impresarios and why did Spain want to recruit them? Now, an impresario was basically was somebody who was brought into that region. And in order to exchange, if they come to that region, they would, um, you know, occupy the land. Now, what the problem was, the Spain wanted to have uh, more Anglos or European descent to come over to that region because they had it up between the Native Americans. They had a hard time um, making headway. So they were looking for someone basically on common ground. It was to basically increase non-native population in Texas, and it also provided a buffer zone between the tribes and the rest of Mexico. Um, explain two of the cultural problems with America settlers in Spanish and Mexican Texas face. Uh, the biggest one was religion. Many of the Spanish, they were practicing Catholicism. Now the Anglo-Americans, they were pre predominantly Protestants. So they made a law that the Protestants could not uh, worship openly with their faith. That was a big one. The other one had to do with their law and the al Qaeda system. Um, they did not like the legal system in Mexico. Instead of receiving legal rights and representation, such as from a democracy, a jury, a trial, defendants, they were faced under one person. And he could have been the mayor, he could have been the judge, and he could be in the... Um, the law enforcement. So basically that person had no right. Third question, who was Hayden Edwards and ultimately what happened to his movement? He was an impresario, but he was a very unethical impresario. He liked to evict people before he even got title of the land. It was pretty corrupt. Um, because of this on ethics, Steve, Stephen Austin uh, work together with the Mexican army to stop his bullying. Now, what were the events that lead, led to the siege of the Alamo? Now, because there were a lot of Anglo-Americans moving to Texas, Mexico did not like that. President Santa Ana did not like it at all. And so, in order to try to compromise uh, with the Anglo-Americans because it was uh, the population was increasing he wanted to they wanted to um basically you know you know let them let them worship the way they want to worship let them have the laws like the American laws and how they're governed they did not like the accolade law um also they wanted Texas to be a free country now Santa Ana, he was actually okay with everything except for allowing Texas to be a free nation at first. And then he changed his mind and he had 4,000 troops. He pretty much brought those 4,000 troops in and pretty much slaughtered Anglo-Americans, including Davy Clock, Davy, oh, excuse me, Davy Crockett and Bowie and captured many women. Now, in retaliation, the Anglo-Americans say, hey, wait a minute, remember the Alamo. And so what did they do? They went and captured President Santa Ana. And until he decided to sign a treaty. Now, that's going to lead us to the next question. Why did Mexican Congress refuse to acknowledge and abide by Santa Ana's treaty? Well, first of all, when the treaty was signed by Andrew Jackson, Santa Ana was no longer president of Mexico. So therefore, the Mexican Congress refused to acknowledge this happened. In the end, they always they felt the Mexicans, they felt that Texas was part of Mexico. Now we're on section 11.5. What was the purpose of Wil Wilmot Proviso? It was a bill that would prohibit slavery in the new territory, in any new territory. And what was part of the Liberty Party and why was it formed? It was a single issued party. The main purpose was to eliminate slavery and they believed it was evil. That was their main goal. And so how did the number three, 
how did anti-slavery av- advocates differ from abolitionists? Um, the anti-slavery, they believed basically that slavery should not expand westward. They believe that the western lands should have been only open to white men only, far, basically small farmers and workers, and they, with the promise that they could have economic advancement. Where the abolitionists, they were anti-slavery all the way around, no matter who they were, no matter what religion, no matter what uh, race, race or nationality. Now, who were the barn burners and how did they get their name? They were followers of Martin Van Buren's anti-slavery supporters. They were linked with farmers who actually had to burn their farms because they had a rat infestation. So what is the popularity, what's the principle of the popularity sovereignty? It was a belief that citizens should be able to decide issues based on majority rule, actual number count. Um, what were the ide- ideologies of the Free Soil Party? They opposed slavery into the new colonies. In fact, their motto was free soil, free speech, and free labor, and free men. And finally, eight, summarize the compromise of 1850. Number one, California needed to be a free state, even if it passed uh, above the latitude line. They believe that popular sovereignty, popular vote, should be determined whether slavery would be legal in New Mexico and Utah. Now, they also banned slave trade in D.C., Washington, D.C. However, owning slaves was a slavery was allowed there. The fugitive law. Basically, if you had a slave that escaped and you enabled them or you refused to help the government getting the slave back to their place, that person could be actually fined or put in prison for it. And finally, the border of Texas and New Mexico was established. Now, the Compromise of 1850 initially worked at first, but still, we still had the brewing issues of slavery. And this still caused tension between the North and the South. Have a good one.